Ladies and gentlemen, by transcription, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. shop. I thought maybe you'd give me a lift home. Well, I gotta wait for Pete, but you're welcome if you want to stick around. Yeah, thanks. I'll see you later. Yeah, time. see you later. Hello, Miss Green. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Been here long? Do you think you have the man? Well, I don't know. If you see anybody that looks familiar at all, I want you to speak up. Will there be many people to choose from? Mm, there'll be quite a few. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? That's Sergeant Carter. Thank you. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. My name is Carter, Sergeant Pete Carter. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you see will be numbered. I'll call up a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Okay, bring on the line. All right, keep it moving right over to the end of the stage. Okay, now turn and face front. Hands at your sides. Number three, take your hands out of your pockets. Now, when you answer my questions, talk up so the people in the back of the room can hear what you have to say. Okay, Leroy Morris, open charge. Step out, Leroy. Where do you live? Uh, 237 and one quarter, North Jefferson. Is that a house? It's a hotel, the uh, Jefferson Arms at the hotel. Where do you work? Well, I'm not working. How long since you had a job? Well, I guess about three months. Where'd you work on your last job? The uh, Berkshire Baker. He's too small. He's you like too small. Uh, no. <laughs> when you worked at the bakery, Leroy. Uh, the Berkshire Baker. Yeah. You work at the main plant. Yes. What was your job? I, uh, I cleaned up. Janitor? Well, I guess you could call it that. What would you call it? The cleanup method. Okay, Leroy, step back. Yes, sir. Number two, James Hamilton, open charge. He, he's about the Where right size. Nine oh seven eight East Waterfield. But that doesn't sound like his boy. Uh, that's a no, not sure. Yeah. What's your business? Handyman. Afraid I don't know what a handyman is, Jim. Don't. Why don't you tell me? No, no, no that's right, not his voice. The what other mean, one was much higher. Well, he could have raised it. Like yes, I guess he could. Uh, Sergeant Cargo. Yes, Lieutenant. Have the suspect raise his voice. Talk higher. Raise your voice, Jim. Higher? Yeah, higher. Like this? Higher. A uh, higher, Sergeant. Higher, Jim. How is this? Well, that's more like it. Now, say something. What do you want me to say? <laughs> I feel silly. State your name and address again. James Hamilton, 9078 East Waterfield Street. That's not the man, Lieutenant. Okay, Sergeant. That's fine, Jim. Is that all? You can speak naturally. I hope I still can't. <laughs> step back, Jim. I'm a surprise. All right. Uh, All right. Uh, step back. Okay. Number three, William O'Brien, Grand Theft Auto. Come on, step out. Take your hands out of your pockets. Where do you live, Bill? 211 South Juanita. Where's that? That's a new development over near Marview. He's not the one. That's he's the, too uh, short. The new thin. veterans development, isn't it, Bill? Yes, sir. What's your business? Carpenter. I've never been arrested. Just answer the question. I'm sorry. You employed? Yes, sir. Where? Clearfield Construction Company. Anyone with you when you were arrested? No, sir. What kind of a car was it? It was a foreign car, huh? I don't know what kind it was. I'd been drinking. You drank much? Well, not much. Had a fight with my wife. Oh, I'm sorry. For what? Just supposed to answer the question. You had a fight with your wife? Yes, sir. You got drunk? I sure did. Then what'd you do? Well, I don't remember much. I guess I just got in the car and drove it off. I guess I was feeling sorry for myself and just wanted something to happen. It happened? Yes, sir. It sure did. How long have you been married? Three months since I got back from overseas. Where overseas, Bill? Korea. 
You didn't hold up a bakery while you were feeling sorry for yourself, did you? Hold up a bakery? I sure didn't, honest. Okay, step back, though. I'm sure he isn't the one. No, I'm sure he isn't either. Coffee? Yeah. No identifications, huh? No. How's Miss Green going to identify anybody who walked into a store with a silk stocking over his head? Pretty tough. You ever try it? I've seen it. Here. Oh, thanks. Sure can change your face in a hurry. Yeah. You know, whoever this guy is, he's smart. He's done all three jobs on Monday morning. That's smart? Well, he gets the take for two full days. These bakeries are open on Sunday. Sounds like he might have worked for the bakery. Yeah. Well, know somebody who works for him. He wouldn't know how to find those floor safes unless he was well informed. About 6'1". Yeah. Weight around 180. Mm-hmm. Wears brown hat and leather jacket. And a silk stocking over his face. Hey, it's good coffee. Carries a gun, revolver. And I hope we get him before someone scares him and he starts using it. You got the rest of the bakery staked out? Yeah. Our men will cover from Sunday night till Tuesday morning. Can't spare them any longer than that. Godfrey. That's Klein, Ben. Silk stocking boy at the Excelsior Bakery and shot a guy. Kill him? Don't know yet. Waiting for the ambulance. Excelsior Bakery, huh? Okay, Pete and I'll take it. Something hot? The guy with the silk stocking just held up another bakery, shot someone. Ben. Yeah? This isn't Monday. Yeah. There's Quine. Hi, Ben. Pete. Any witnesses? No, just the girl in the store. Who's the man? Check her for the bakery, just making the rounds. Talk to the girl yet? No, I've been too busy getting you in the ambulance down here. Well, let's see what she has to say. Oh, Miss Beatty? How is he, Sergeant? Uh, take him to the hospital. We'll know more after he gets her. Uh, this is Lieutenant Guthrie and Sergeant Carter. They'd like to ask you some questions. I hope I can help. Uh, did you get a good look at the man, Miss Beatty? A good look? Yes, it was horrible. He looked like... Well, I can't describe it. His face was all pushed out of shape under his silk stocking. Same guy. Uh, how did it happen? It all started after I'd given him the money. He made you open the safe? Yes, the floor safe. He made me go into the back of the store with him. I was scared stiff. Well, we got into the storeroom and he made me open the safe... Then he told me to put all the money into the bread bag. I did it as fast as I could. I just wanted him to leave, to get out of the shop. Mm-hmm. And what happened then? Then he made me lie down on the floor. Just as I'd done what he said, the bell on the front door rang. It was the checker from the bakery, Mr. Burns. Go ahead. Well, the bell rang, and this robber made me get up and go out to see who it was. He told me to wait on them as though nothing had happened. Said he'd have his gun on me not to make any slips. I've never been so scared in my life. How did he know it was Mr. Burns? How did he know... Well, I, I guess when I started talking to him, Mr. Burns, that is, I almost fainted when I saw who it was. Well, did you try to warn him? Mr. Burns? No, I was so scared that I just stood there. If I'd only done something... Well, now, just relax. Try to take it easy and take your time. Yes, sir. I knew that Mr. Burns had come to check the store, and they'd go into the back of the store. All I could do was stand there. I tried to talk, but nothing would come out. Finally, I asked Mr. Burns to go away and come back later. And what did Mr. Burns do? Well, he just laughed and made a joke about my having a boyfriend in the back of the store. The robber must have gotten scared when Mr. Burns laughed because that's when he... Oh, my gosh. I'm getting the shakes. Look at me. Here. Sit down. I'll be all right. It's funny. I was pretty good till I started telling you about it. You want to tell us the rest? Yeah, sure. I'll be all right. Well, Mr. Burns was still laughing when I heard the first shot. It all happened so fast, and I was so frightened. Hey, you said first shot. How many shots were fired? How many? Oh, three, I think. I was looking at Mr. Burns when the first one hit him. He stopped laughing. I'll never forget his face. Did he shoot at you? I don't think so. He fired two more times, as I remember, and Mr. Burns spun around and fell on the counter. Right over there. The doc found three holes in Burns. Mm-hmm. And what happened then? And then the man ran out the front door. 
I ran after him and yelled for the police. The man on the street called in. That's when I got the call. Miss Beatty, can you remember if the hold-up man touched anything? Or if there was any place where he might have left fingerprints? Let me see. Oh, I don't think I'd remember if he did. Get all the information on Miss Beatty. We want a statement. Right. I hope you catch him. We will. This guy isn't going to be easy. He'll slip. They always do. Yeah. And in the meantime, he's liable to fill up this hospital. Well, there's the doc. Hope he has something good to say. I hope so. Hello, Guthrie. You look as tired as I feel. Yeah, I'm tired, all right. How about Burns? Can't tell yet. He's still out. Just wheeled him out of surgery. Took three slugs out of the center abdomen. Mm-hmm. What were they? Looked like 38s. Sent them over to Charlie in the lab. I'll check. They were steel jackets. Otherwise, Burns wouldn't have any stomach at all. Must have been fired at close range. Powder burns on his shirt. According to the witness, he was about ten feet away. I sent the clothes down to Charlie in the lab. Charlie's going to be tired, too. Have any leads on who did it? No, no, a thing. What does he look like? You ever see a man with a silk stocking pulled over his head? Oh, you're kidding. Not a bit. Makes identification almost impossible. Silk stocking, huh? Thinking about trying it? Might not be a bad idea when I want to sneak out of the house. <laughs> well, take care of yourself, Ben. Get some sleep. I'll try. Send you over some vitamins. Thanks. Don't mention Nice guy. Yeah. We think we've got a tough job. He probably won't show himself for a while after using that gun. Well, he might. So far, he's been taking nothing but chances. Well, he sure crossed us up. Pulling a job on Wednesday? Yeah. Pretty smart. Yeah? Two days take again. How do you figure? Bank holiday yesterday. Hey, you're right. I'll be done. Now, let's see what the lamb's got. Hi, boys. What do you got for us, Charlie? You got these, 38s. Uh-huh. Find anything in the bakery? Yeah, nice little girl. Gave me some coffee cake to take home. Anything official? Nothing yet. The victim was shot from about ten feet. Yeah, we know that. Hey, you want some coffee cake? No, thanks. You shouldn't be eating that stuff, Charlie. You're getting too heavy. <laughs> I'd want to die if you really worried. Well, let's know if you find anything. Don't I always? Honest, Charlie. Can't stay healthy with all that weight. My mental attitude. I escape by feeding my neurosis on coffee cakes and bonbons. <laughs> Well, I'm going to stake those bakeries out on a 24-hour schedule if it's just one man. Man. Yeah, what's up, Clint? man I got shot in the bakery, Mr. Burns. Yeah, what about him? Doc Gerson just called from the hospital. Burns died. Mm. What about his family? I'm going over there now. Well, I've got a killer to catch now. <laughs> Big Town is where mystery and action await you every week. CBS Radio's Big Town, Wednesday nights on most of these same stations, is where editor Steve Wilson and his staff of fighting newsmen and women come to grips with criminals and killers. And there's action-packed listening every minute. Don't miss the latest Big Mystery Extra in Big Town. It says here that meat's going up another four cents. Yeah? Mm. <laughs> Remember when you could get a hamburger for 15? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should be vegetarians, huh? Mm, vegetables are up, too. Why don't you read the funnies? Uh-huh. Food keeps going up. We'll have to give up eating. Yeah, well, sure. I can just see you. Let's say anything about Vern's getting shot? Yeah. Silk stocking killer. Mm, that'll sell papers. Police baffled. Always were baffled. Why don't they say anything about the ones we wrap up in a hurry? Police not baffled. Mm-hmm. Well, come on, don't hog it. All right, here. Read the funnies. Better than this menu. What's the matter with the menu? You read it lately? I make it up. I didn't think it looked real. <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> here. Two hamburger steaks in a hurry. I'd sure hate to wait around when you were taking your time. 
How do you put up with him, Lieutenant? Ignore him. Danny, I really love you. It's your food. I'm mad at. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, look, I hate huh? to bust this up. All right, then don't. Some guy just called him. Yeah? Yeah, he's out walking his dog, so I guy bury a sack, dug up the sack, and found it full of money. We're on the bakery job. Yeah, well, that, that's what this is all about. What do you mean? The bag the money was in came from the Berkshire Bakery. What's the man's name? And Davis. Arthur Davis. Quiet, William. Quiet, boy. Oh, stop it, will you? <laughs> Get back there. Mr. Davis? Yes, yes, what is it? Uh, we're police officers, Mr. Davis. Oh, come in, believe... come in, come in. Thank you. Uh, this is Sergeant... I thought you were coming right over. I called a good 15 minutes ago. thought you would be right over here. Well, we were having The dinner. money's in the other room in the sack. <laughs> William... Oh, now, what's the matter with you? You like policemen? I guess you don't like policemen. I guess not. I guess he ain't a police dog. Oh, oh there's the money. Uh, do you mind telling us how you found it? Oh, I dug it up. I told one of your men on the phone. Didn't he tell you? Well, he was a little vague. He just said... I that... saw some fella burying it. I was out walking with him. <laughs> oh, no, William. I was out walking him, and I saw this fella burying something. Uh, what do you fellas call yourselves? Well, I'm Guthrie. Uh, Davis, Arthur Davis. Now, how do you do? Uh, this that's is some... William. <laughs> oh, he's quite a dog. I'm sure he is. I saw this fellow out burying something. He was looking mighty suspicious. Oh, yes, he was looking around like he was expecting to see a ghost or something. You think you'd recognize him again, Mr. Davis? Recognize him? Oh, no. It was, too... it was way too dark. Well, didn't he see you? Well, how could he? Well, if you saw him... Well, I was on the road above him. He couldn't see me, but I could sure see him. And William, he didn't open his mouth. Not once. He's a good dog. Mm. You mind if I look at the bag, please? Hmm? Oh, go ahead, yeah. $432. <laughs> that's what I found, and that's what you got. Would you mind showing us where you found this, Mr. Davis? Why, certainly, certainly. $432. I didn't touch a bit of it. <laughs> Come on, will you? <laughs> Let's show the fellas where we found the... Oh, excuse me. Phew. Yeah. Hello? What's that? Who? No, my name is David. Guthrie. Must be quiet. No, 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 no. This is Davis. Uh, that's for me, Mr. Davis. Uh, oh, yes, wait a minute. <laughs> Why didn't you say who you wanted? He asked for some fellow named Guthrie. Well, I'm Guthrie. I told my office to call. <laughs> ah, William, it's now Guthrie. you can shut up now. You know, it's not polite to make all this racket yeah. when someone's trying to talk on the telephone. Well. Now, if I've told you one time, I've told you a thousand Okay. Times. I'll get right over. <laughs> yeah, nice boy. Yeah. Boy with a silk stocking. Boy with a silk stocking. Another bakery? Yeah. You stay here with Mr. Davis. Well, ain't you going to come along while I show you? Well, you show Sergeant Cog. Who? I'm Cogger. Oh, oh, well, surely. Come along. I'll show you. <laughs> yes, you can come with you. After he shows you, send him back to the house. Quine said our boy's wounded, so maybe he'll come back to dig up with the money. Right. You fellas coming? I want to leave this door open. You know. Be right there, Mr. Davis. <laughs> oh, hold your horses, will you, boy? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Not far now. Just up ahead, and then you turn right. Just up ahead. All right, Mr. Davis. I left Sergeant, uh, what's his name? Uh, Cargo. I left him up there. Oh, it's cold up there. Turn right. Better slow down there. Uh, wish you'd let me take William with me. He won't like me going out without... Stop right here. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, what's his name? He should be around here somewhere. Hey, up, he... Now, the place where he buried the money is right down below the uh, road. You don't have to get out, Mr. Davis. Well, don't you want me to show you where... Well, the... you showed Sergeant Carga, didn't you? I... Well, sure I showed him. Well, but... then you better go back to your house. Oh, I wanted to stick around for the fireworks. Uh, take him back, Quine. Right. Well, look, I showed you where I dug up the money. I'm sorry, Mr. Davis. Uh, come right back, Quine. Give us a whistle. Right. Oh, boy, I don't think that's very nice of you. I find you the money in the... <laughs> There's a character. Uh, now, where's the spot? Oh, off the road and down the hill. Watch your step, though. Front of steep. Yeah. Kind of. Right over here. Over here. What was doing at the bakery? Uh, it was small stakeout. A boy with a silk stocking came in and small covered him. Here's the spot. Uh-huh. Well, if you're back here, a man must have gotten away. Yeah. Let's get out of sight. I'll tell you about it. Uh, trees over there are pretty good. Right. 
Small and the suspect shouted out. Small hit him, but doesn't know how bad. Chased him, but there was a lot of traffic in that district. Uh, yeah, how's this? Uh, okay. Now, which way does Stark and Pace come up here? Davis didn't see him come up, but he says he left down that way. Mm. There's a golf course over there. Must have come through it. Mm-hmm. Well, if he's not hurt too badly, he may come looking for his money. And if he is hurt badly, he might save us some trouble. Uh, that a lot. We're pretty sure he had a car parked over on Adams. A couple of people saw a man run up to a car and take off. They all said it looked like he was hurt. Any license number? No. The guy sure got a lot of nerve. Pressed his luck too far this time. After killing Burns, you'd think he'd stay low for a while. You'd think so. Well, there's no telling about some people. Uh, wish I'd brought a heavy coat. Yeah. Wish you'd brought two. Line. I flash it again. Uh, Keep coming. Yeah, watch your step. I parked the car down the hill. Yeah, we heard you. It's off the road in case he comes up that way. He came through the golf course last time. Over that way. Oh, it's cold. It sure is. Hey, what time is it? Yeah, about nine to thirty. Golf course, huh? Yeah. You play? Yeah, not for a long time. Used to be pretty good. I never could get interested in that game. Oh, it's a great game. Yeah. Look, I pounded a bait for a lot of years. I had enough walking. Oh, it's it's great exercise. This is all the exercise I'll ever want. <gasps> Boy, I'm freezing. Ben? Yeah? Uh, no, I don't think he's going to show. Hey. I just thought of something. Come on. Funny if they already got him. I told them where we were. They'd let us know. Uh, I'll bet you a good dinner. Hold it. You hear it? No. I didn't hear anything about it. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's a dog or something. That's no dog. Keep it down. You see him? No. There he is. Wait till he goes over to the hall. He's holding his shoulder. He's hurt. He's a boy. Let him get to the hall. What's with that dog? It sounds like it's coming up here. Stop! Stop or I'll shoot! Look out, Ben! He's down. Everybody okay? Yeah. Shut up, William. Now let's take a look. William! William! Are you all right? Crazy nut. William! Stay where you are, Davis. Uh, William, get out. Yeah. You got the fellow, huh? How about it, Quine? He's dead. Shame on you, William. Don't you? Uh, Mr. Davis. Yeah? Come here. Well, sure. Take it easy, Pete. Uh, what do you want? Has that dog got a license? Huh?
before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? Uh, you people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure, the suspect, have him held. The officers The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie, was written by Blake Edwards and Robert Wells, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, with Joel Samuels, Virginia Gregg, Howard McNear, Harry Lang, Jim Backus, and Dave Light. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> Approximately 228,000 crippled children and adults were served by Easter Seals during 1951. How? Through 2,000 affiliated societies in every state, the District of Columbia, and in Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. These societies provided medical care, therapy, home teaching, camping, and workshops. They established employment services, cerebral palsy centers, and rehabilitation centers for persons of all races and creeds. Still, there remain in this country thousands of crippled children who need care. You can help reach more of them by contributing generously to Easter Seals. If you know a crippled child or adult who needs help, call the Crippled Children's Society in your county. Remember, to help crippled children and adults, contribute generously to your Easter Seals Society. Give to Easter Seals and support this work. <laughs> will be heard 25 minutes earlier. Be sure to listen to The Lineup next week, April 1st, immediately following Life with Luigi and The Luella Parsons Show. That's next week, April 1st. Take one healthy jigger of jollity, add a heaping round of madness, mix in liberal portions of Willie Lump Lump, Dead Eye, The Mean Little Kid, and other assorted creations from Red Skelton's Scrapbook of Satire, and you have the complete recipe for CBS Radio's one and only Red Skelton Show on Wednesday nights. If it's fun you're after, don't miss Red Skelton every Wednesday night over most of these same CBS radio stations. Dan Coverly speaking. And remember, Wednesday night is Bing Crosby night on the CBS Radio Network.